Question 17 is to describe sample spaces by intersections and unions. Now let's look into a problem. Here we have a fey die which has been rolled once. Let A be the event of rolling an even number and let B be the event of rolling a number greater than 4. Find A intersection B. This symbol over here, intersection, means the sample space must be there in this A and B in both the events. Then that is intersection. Uh, only such terms will be considered. If you write all the terms together, that would be union. Now let's try solving this one. First, what is A? A is rolling even number. It is 2, 4 and 6. You can write this as even numbers. What about the even B? It is rolling number greater than 4. See now, greater than 4 means, is the 4 included? So, greater than 4 means it is 5 and 6. The 4 number is not included. If it was greater than or equal to 4, means 4, 5, 6. But here they have just told greater than it is, just greater than 4. Now we need to write A intersection B, that is the number, the terms which are common in both. That is only 6 over here, so that is your answer. A intersection B is 6. And we can see the sample answer as well. They have written the same thing. The A intersection B means it contains both the outcomes of, sample, uh, of the sample space A and B, outcomes from both. So similar problems are there. Please do try this. Here I will just quickly walk through this. A fey die is rolled once. Let A be the event of rolling an even number and B be the rolling, uh, event of rolling odd number. Now look at this. We have even and odd. Is there any number which is both even and odd? No. Even numbers are 2, 4, 6, 8 and Odd numbers are 1, 3, 5, 7 and goes on. But here since we are just rolling a die, the maximum can be capital 6. So we can write the sample space of A, 2, 4, 6, B is 1, 3, 5 and none of them are common. So we use the null set symbol psi over here. So uh, this is how we write it. And you can just write empty set or null set as well or the symbol, it's fine. Here we have been given a spinner. And we need to find these given things. So let A be the event of the spinner landing on 4 or 10. Okay, what is A? 4 or 10, that's it. So that will be the answer, 4 comma 10. And what is B? Spinner landing on a section which is divisible by 4. When you, uh, Which is divisible by 4 or you can even consider it to be multiple of 4. It's the same thing. So 4, 8, 12 and so on. That is... Uh, over here only we have 4, 8 and 12, but divisible of 4 are basically like multiples of 4. So here it's only 4, 8, 12. What is common in both? Intersections. So it must be common in both of these. It's only 4. That's the answer. Now similar way, please do try solving these yourselves because they are pretty straightforward and the answers can be seen over here. Just see what is asked. Okay, since they have asked prime numbers, I'll just tell you... Prime numbers are not divisible by any numbers except itself and 1. 1 is not a prime number. It starts with 2. But each and every number is divisible by itself because it will give you the answer 1. And it's all also divisible by 1. You can divide by 1 any number. It will give the same number, right? So other than those, if it cannot be divided by any numbers, then it is prime. Say, for example, 11. You can't divide by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's not possible. Only by 1 and 11, therefore it's prime. See, why 6 is not a prime? Because you can divide 6 by 3. Answer is 2. You're getting a whole number. So it's not a prime. And over here, multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12. And find the common numbers. Here we have problems on cards. A card is selected from a standard deck of cards. Now, this term here, standard deck, means it has only 52 total cards. It doesn't include the jokers in it. No extra cards. Each suit just has 13 cards, that is from A, 2, 3, till 10. And there are picture cards, that is King, Jack, and Queen. What is the probability that a card is a diamond and a 7? Here, we are not finding the sample space. Here, we are finding the probability. So... 
there are plenty of ways to do it. Now, if you want to directly write it, see, what is the probability of seven diamonds in the total deck of cards? There's only one diamond, which is seven, right? One out of 52. This is the answer. It's very simple. But how exactly would you do in a writing exam? You need to write out, right? So you can do one thing. Probability of A, that is all the diamonds, how many are there? They are basically 13 out of 52. And the probability of a number being 7, what is the probability? It is 4 uh, by 52. Now, if you multiply these both, 13 by 52 into, you, you should write this probability of A, you should mention this is number, number being diamond. This is number that is 7. And then if you multiply these two, what's going to happen? Now, it's one times and four times and four one time and one time. The answer is one by 52. This is also the same answer, right? It should be the same. Uh, this is one way to do it. Otherwise, you can do a Venn diagram. Now, imagine you draw Venn diagrams in the sense two circles and intersections. Now, which are all the cards that are diamonds? You have one ace of diamond, two diamonds, three diamonds, four diamonds and so on it keeps on going till king of diamonds okay now which are the sevens you have seven from clubs i'll write seven from hearts next and seven from spades now seven from diamond is what is required and even over here there are seven diamonds so we'll write in the middle section that is the intersecting so um, what is the uh, desirable solution that's one desired outcome sorry one out of 52 the total outcome so these are other methods to solve this up so whichever is convenient you can choose here the answer is given as you can see they have written all the details whatever is just told and they have done a venn diagram and 1 by 52 is the answer if you put in the calculator and press sd you get 0 0.19 0 0.0192 that is, if you multiply that number by 100, you get in percentage. That is 1.92%. That's how we solve this. Now, try this by yourselves. A card is selected from a standard deck of cards. Again, there are total 52 cards. What is the probability that the card has the number on it that is divisible by 2? Okay, it can be any number that is divisible by 2 and it is black. Now, if you think practically like think directly the answer let's see which are the numbers uh, which are divisible by two in the cards it's two four six eight ten it can be the dime uh, sorry it's black suits right so it can be the clubs or spades so there is five times two that is ten possibilities total 10 possibilities divided uh, the favorable outcome divided by the total outcome is 52 this must be the answer 10 by 52 now if you want to solve it one by one what are all the numbers divisible by two there are total five numbers divisible in one particular suit there are four suits right clubs spades heart and diamonds so it will be five times two it's 20 desirable 5 times 4, sorry, 20 desirable outcomes divided by 52, multiply it with, now how many are black? So there are 20, uh, sorry, 26, 13 in one black suit, that is clubs, and then another 13 in spades, so it's 26 by 52. So it's basically 1 by 2, and this one time, 10 times, it's 10 by 52. The answer will be 10 by 52. You can do any method, or you can do the Venn diagram over here, it's shown the Venn diagram, yes. So this is also possible. The final answer will be 10 by 52, that is 5 by 26. Now we have another spinner with alphabets over it now. So let A be the event that the spinner lands on a vowel. And let B be the event that's the, that lands on the letter J. What are the possible outcomes? Now vowels, I'll come to it in a while. The letter J, there are two letters. Do we write both? No, we just write once, okay? The B would be just J. What are vowels? Vowels, as we know, it's A, E, I, O, U. What exactly are they? They are some special um, letters which will change the pronunciation. Say, for example, an apple. You don't tell a apple. Before a vowel, we call it an. And say, for example, event. Now, we have the event. Let B be the event that lands on the letter. 
If you see T-H-E before a vowel, you call it the, whereas if you see it before letter, like a consonant, other than vowels are consonants, you call it the. So the pronunciation changes. There are various other things, you know. Um, but the basic thing is uh, an, an, uh, and the, and the, and such like that. So here, vowels are A, E, A, but A is repeated twice, so no need of writing. A, E, U, O. Those are the vowels. A, E, O, U. And over here, we have only J. Now, we have to find the union, so we need to write them all up together. A, E, O, U, J. That's the answers. Now, the next problem is again the same, but it's just they have asked consonants this time. So, consonants is anything other than vowel. It's K, E. H, S, J. So those are the consonants. And over here, what is the next one? It lands on K. Landing on K is only one possibility. That's K. And write all of them together. But here, K is already mentioned in the set A, right? So you just write the set A because we don't write it K, comma, K again. Just once. And over here, a random number generator is used to generate one integer between 1 and 20. Let C be the event of a generator generating a multiple of 5. Okay, multiple of 5 within 1 to 20. The numbers are generated randomly from 1 to 20 only. Now, we need this set to be a multiple of 5. It's either 5, 10, 15, 20. These are the possibilities. So, that's it. Now, D be the event generating a number less than 12. So, it can be anything until 12. So, 1 to 11. That's it, 1, 2, 11. And what are the, what is the union of these both events? It would be 1 to 11, and then we have 15 and 20. Just write all the numbers. If they are repeated, only write it once. And the last problem in this topic, that's the question 17. Again, a random number generator is used, but this time we are generating integers from 1 to 100. Let A be the event generating multiples of 10 and B be the event of generating a factor of 30. Now, this is important. I'll come to it in a while. What are the possible outcomes of each event? Now, multiples of 10 is simple. 1 to 100, 1, 10, 20, 30 and so on till 100. Now, what are the factors? Now, there are different methods to solve for factors. Now, here it's not least common multiple. It's the factors, all possible factors. Now, factors means 30, how can it be written by using two integers? In the sense, 2 multiplied by 15 is a possibility, right? These both are the factors of 30. Same way, I can write this as 3 times 10, isn't it? This is also a factor. These both are factors. Now, the first factor, which I have not written over here, is always 1 and itself. Any number can be multiplied by 1 and by itself, right? So this is the first factor, 1 times 30. Next would be, start with the number 2. If it's not possible, go ahead with the next number. 3 is also possible. What about 4? No, 4 is not a factor. If you know the tables of 4, we will have 28 and then 32. So 4 is not possible. What about 5? Yes, 5 is possible. 5 times 6. And now when we go next, it's again 6 repeated, right? No, we don't use this. What about 7? No. 8? No. 9? No. 10 is already mentioned. 11, 12, 13, 14 is not possible. 15 is mentioned and then we go back 30. So when we reach the halfway, we can stop. So now these are all the uh, factors. So let's write them out. You can see it's a 1, 2, 3, 5, then 6, 10, 15, 20. The factors of 30 are. Now we need to write all of them together. Write all these factors and include the uh, even A as well. So that is how we can easily solve it up. Uh, now, please do write the sentences. I might have directly written it. Please do write the sentences and then write the answer. Don't directly jump to the answer. It's a pretty simple method. Please practice them by writing by yourselves. You can practice the same questions without looking at the solutions. And if you have any doubts, please post them in the comments.